Oh, there it is, sister. Come on, sister. I just had a sneaking suspicion. <laughs> uh, I, I want to tell everybody uh, today I have very big problem with my body. I cannot walk. Uh, I make exercise at home and maybe something wrong. I cannot walk, really. And so before I tell my husband, I cannot cook, I cannot do it, anything. And yesterday when I stay at home, I don't. That's ridiculous. It's, this is it's not possible to be from God. I go in uh, my room and tell Satan, get out from me. No, get your hand right. from me. Yeah. You don't have right. Yeah. I am not your property. I am your property. Yeah. Take your hand. And I feel again. I feel. But I start you to cook anything to do it. Painful. Painful. This morning I get up. Nothing. The scripture here, here we go. All right. <laughs> Many people know me, I come here and everything, but uh, when I tell you my testimony, and this is not going to be the whole thing, I just want to tell you a little piece of what happened in my life with my family. Um, I grew up in church uh, my whole life, and the way they presented God to me, it was that um, uh, God always going to punish you if you do something wrong. If oh, my belly was aching, it's because I did something wrong. If it, um, anything can happen to me, a headache, anything, uh, it was because God was punishing, punishing me for doing something wrong. And the worst thing that the people that they was telling me about God, it was my, my own mom, but I never saw God in her life. He, she showed me um, horrible things, and I got punished for those things. I was abused by some of the people that I told my mom, and she never cared about me, so I started, as growing up, I started getting so angry in myself, and, and the more that she told me about going to church and everything, it was like, oh, it's the worst thing you can take me to because of uh, it was like no shoes, no nothing if you don't go to church. No this if you don't go to church. And it was like I grown into being like how people care that you're telling me about God and you're doing all these things. Even my family members, uh, the pastor in my church, he was sleeping with all the girls in church. And one of my own nieces, she, was, she is the product of that thing. And when... I was growing up seeing all those horrible things. I was like, how can I, you tell me about you are a Christian, you are this. And I say, I never want to be one of those. I never, never, as soon as I grow up, I go, go far as I can go and never visit a church because all those people, they're a bunch of hypocrites and I don't want nothing to do with them in my whole life. So when I asked was like 15, 16, I rebelled completely and I was like, no, this is, I was a different person. And um, being here right now, it's kind of like, look at where I am. In church, that person, the place I was running, trying to run my whole life from. And, um, but the greatest thing God did in my life, as many, many years, I was holding the grudge between two of my uh, older brothers. I come from a family of 12. I was the lad, I was the baby. My father was an alcoholic, was abusive parent, and he did, he um, mistreated my brothers and sisters. Uh, five died, but we ended up being seven, but from those seven, we're different ages. Uh, and uh, of course, since I was the last in my family to be uh, born, uh, my
my older brothers, they say I have to pay because I never suffer the way they suffer. So the way they made me suffer, it was in the abusive way. And I never forgive my, one of my brothers never forgive for that. And I always, always, all my life was holding that gross for that person. And even I was thinking, like, how can I kill him? How can I do this? How, all these years of my life, I was growing to be that revenge, that revenge. Fifteen years ago, I went back to look for him because that was my time of revenge. What are I going to do to him? What are I going to do to the other person that did another sister that she was the, also I witnessed it and abuse and cruelty and everything. And I was just the little kid like in the corner being scared, being petrified of things. And um, like God put me this man in my life. He married me as he accepted me the way I was in that time. I was not saved in that time. I was all with my insecurities uh, because Everybody on my, in my family told me that I was the most horrible thing ever in this world. I was the ugliest person in this thing. So I never have a stability that I have a mother to come for me. I never have a stability of my family surroundings that to come for me. So I wasn't like a not case. And he accepted me the way I was. And I think God put him for a reason in my life. Because he started showing me the affection I never had. And he started showing me that I have to let go of some stuff. And uh, even in the darker times in my life, I thank him that he stay by my side. And uh, as I was growing and everything, to me, I grew, I grew up to be, that everything was awful. Even my pregnancies, I never enjoyed them because I was to, like I was ashamed to people to see. Oh, I have a baby, and I know how that happened. And I never had to enjoy even to be to become a mom. Into my last thing is when I really start growing up with all those bad things and everything. But the amazing thing that God did in my life is like um, the the beginning of um, last year. God has was dealing with me and pastor was preaching about something that let go and stop. Sometimes you say, oh, you, you forgive that person and everything, and you still, and, and I was like, wow, in that time, even God was dealing with my heart, and then by him preaching of those things, and he also was saying, and you know, sometimes you say, why well, I'm preaching these things, maybe somebody, you know, you never know. And yes, I was the person that God was dealing in my heart. And last year, I went to look for my brother, and the minute uh, he told me, but he never, he's right now 69 years old. And the minute he saw me, he, he didn't recognize me. I, I hardly recognize him because he's all right here and old person. And uh, I say, I'm looking for this person. And uh, he's like, yes, I am. And he's like, who's looking for him? And I say, well, uh, his sister is looking for him. And he's like, my sister? And he's like, where's my sister? And even he was like, where's my sister? Because it's been years, many years that he has not given. And then it, when I start talking and everything, and he's like, wait a minute. And he said, you know what? He started crying. And my husband was there. And my kids were there. And they witnessed the miracle. And he said, you know what? From all my brothers and sisters, you're the last person I deserve to come to look for me. And I said, well, you don't have a hug for your sister? And in that minute, God healed all the stuff. Then I then went and looked for her. Just with his words, to me, it was enough. And, and um, it's, it's, um, like I said, sometimes you you think like, oh, 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 that's horrible thing, but you know what? I just got complete the thing. And then um, the other thing I did is this is the beginning of this year. I went and looked for that sister, and she was in shock that I was there. And um, and I said, you know, the, the thing that I didn't look for you for many, many years, because.
as you all wish to me was a big monster that is going like just a step on me and finish with me. But I'm here now and I tell you that I look for you because I love you and if you want a relationship with me, I'm here. And if not, as long I just want to put the peace and say that I'm 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 done with anything. And the amazing thing is that my sister, the one that she said that she never also want to step in church and everything, she was here two weekends or three weeks and oh, weekends sure. ago. That was oh, the amazing thing. to hear testimonies, how God's moving in, in families and, and uh, 
You know, there's a lot of love in families because uh, now when people love you, they stay. Yeah. Right? They see you at your best, they see you at your worst, and they're still there. So, yeah. And that's how God is. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He knows the real us, and He still loves us. And uh, So my wife and I are so grateful to pastor such a wonderful church. And it's not just, you know, the church is not the building or the parking lot. Thank God for all that, you know. But uh, it's the people. It's the families. It's the... Uh, people that are touched by the Word and the Spirit of God. And so, was there anybody else that had something this morning they just want to testify and thank God? Come, come on, sister. All the way from Suffolk, Virginia. Come on. That's quite a drive. Yeah, I know you love the Lord. Thank God for Pastor Jim, Pastor Ben, and the household here at Rivers of Living Words. I work as a registered nurse. I was suspended for one day behind a line. But hearing the youth this morning talk about transformation and the young lady talk about forgiveness, I knew God wanted me here today. I said, God, I got up late and I didn't have enough time to drive to Victory Life in Hampton. I said, God, I want to honor you and to be on time. And God kept saying to me, you know, there's a scripture in Psalms, I believe it's 36, that says, don't let the foot of pride move me. That because of the jealousy and standing for Christ and don't gossip and, you know, you be in that light. Even though I was lied on, Joseph was lied on, but he stood. Yeah. David was lied on, but he stood. And it does hurt. But hearing his testimonies today, as I was sitting there, I didn't want to get up. But God kept, I said, God, and Pastor Jim said, get up again. I'm going to get up because he said, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I'm not ashamed of this gospel. Amen. And I could go back to work tonight and walk in love and forgiveness Amen. and see God. That word in my heart that the foot of pride would not move me from love. Because the foundation of this gospel is a gospel of love, a gospel of forgiveness and temperance. So I just praise God. For giving me that love to forgive from the heart and let it go. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, this is a great sermon today. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have anything they want to share today? Come on, Brother Santos. Oh. Uh, Ladies first, but that's okay. Come on, sister, and then we have her son who's coming.
then um, the Lord, um, one time I was just having some financial problems recently, and I was believing God for $1,300. And I remember I was reading that Kenneth Hagin, when he used to believe God for finances, he would pray in the Spirit constantly, speaking in tongues. So I said, well, Lord, I believe that you're leading me in that direction to speak in tongues. So I started speaking in tongues. The first week came, no money. The second week came, no money. But then the Holy Spirit showed me that I had had a savings account that I didn't even know I had. And to make a long story short, I had, I ended up getting $4,800. Right. So God is a good Get, get told the, you know, the time, don't even slack off on that. And if things are really hard on you and, and, and you can't get a job or what have you, maybe the Lord wants you to go into business. You know, we Christians, we need to seek God for, for wisdom. We're, we have the answers. And when, when the world is, is looking for answers, we have the answers with this Jesus Christ. Amen? So, I just want to encourage you, seek wisdom. That's the principal thing. One of the things that I was reading in, in Acts, the book of Acts, I think it was chapter 26. Paul was a happy man. You know why he was in chains? He was he was in prison unjustly for two years. Amen. He was going through, but yet he said, "I count myself happy to preach you the word to you, King Agrippa." You know. And and here we are. We just have our car breaks down. We're not happy. We lose our joy. Okay. Our one bill doesn't get paid. We lose our joy. But Paul went through imprisonment for two years. Amen. And we should never lose our joy. Oh, yeah. We should count ourselves happy no matter what. The worst possible state we make in a year, you're still blessed. Yeah. You're still highly favored. And anybody that tells you that you're lying, well, you got to be truthful. you got to spell it like it is. No, let me tell you, if, if, if I'm being accused of lying because I say that I'm blessed, then talk to the thought, then see the example of Abraham when God said, your father put in many multitudes, and he wasn't experiencing the promise of God yet. So I don't care what I'm going to do. I say I'm blessed. And I'm yeah. favorite. And you are too. Yeah. You want to to you step out of faith and believe God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Got some pretty good preachers. <laughs> I think uh, seven years we haven't had testimony service, so to speak, so uh, we have always endeavored to follow the Holy Spirit, and uh, most of the time we've been commended for that, sometimes even criticized or misunderstood, but we've always endeavored to let the Holy Spirit have the service and have His way, because uh, He knows a whole lot more than we do. He has an advantage on us. He can see the future. And, uh, he's the uh, air traffic controller, and he tells us when to descend or ascend, and he knows our flight plan. So do we have anybody else that uh, has anything they want to share this morning? Come on, Come on Brother Joshua. Shane is not here to, to tell it, but uh, we had another testimony from the, the youth camp. Uh, I think it was the first, maybe the second day, uh, they were playing one of the games, and she had sprained her ankle. Uh, so they put that in emergency aid or whatever. They iced it and put an air cast on it and everything. Well, then uh, that night, or either that night or the next night in the night service, uh, they called her up and prayed for her, her ankle. And she said from that very time, she was able to walk on it and walk on it normally. And now she's walking on it just fine. So, um, and if you know Shannon, she can be, she's a little dramatic when she hurts herself. So to see her now walking around uh, with no ailment, it's, a, it's truly a miracle. And she testified, you know, the Lord healed her in that. And so I appreciate everybody's gift. And send them to you. And I had a couple of kids go, Dylan and Shannon, and they really have a great time. And that makes a lasting impression on the kids. So I definitely appreciate everybody's gift and thank the Lord for that opportunity. That's great. Anybody else have anything? All right. Well, we'll, we'll do give you a scripture and we'll uh, send you out to the buffet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You got your Bibles there with you. Let's go to the uh, book of Galatians, please. We were there uh, earlier. Chapter 5, and verse 6. This will be a short message today. But kind of just a, hopefully a culmination of the goodness of God that we've heard today and the principles of the Word that, that work in our lives. 
Look, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, the Apostle Paul wrote the church at Galatia, and he said, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. The Amplified Bible says, For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith that is activated, energized, and expressed, and working through love. So Dan Hagen would always tell us, he'd say, you know, if your faith isn't working the way that it should be, as far as, you know, healing for your body or your family or your uh, finances, he said, this is the first place I always check up on. You know, my, my love walk. It's, uh, it's my love walk. Uh, you know, the place that it should be. And all of us realize that, uh, you know, it's easier to walk in love when other people are walking in love towards you. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture said love is patient, love is kind. When others are patient and kind with you, it's easier to reciprocate. You say, well, they're respectful, they're patient, kind, so I'll be patient and kind back to them. But uh, we know it's more difficult when everybody out in traffic is not filled with the Holy Ghost and walking in love. Everybody on the job is not in the Word all week, you know. And uh, that's where the challenge is. But we remember that uh, faith is activated. You think about, you know, baking something and without the yeast it doesn't rise. So the love of God activates faith. In other words, faith has to have a motive. And that motive is the love of God. And if you say, Lord, I want to be blessed. Well, what activates that blessing? I want to be blessed in order to be a blessing. That is the motive. The motive is, is not just for, for personal gain. It's so that I can be a blessing. I channel a blessing to others. And so that kind of love in your heart activates that faith to cause those things to come to pass. Uh, faith is also energized. There's places where the enemy works. You know, sometimes he'll punch the time card over time to try to steal your joy and your peace and to try to get you to quit. Yeah. But the love of God is what energizes your faith. Yeah. There's many times in this past seven years, you know, where, I mean, there were just circumstances and sometimes even individuals that said, you know, you ought to just give up. But uh, the scripture says that uh, it is uh, love that energizes your faith. The love of God. Amen? Amen. And then, uh, so a lot of times it's important to ask, why are we doing what we're doing? You know, what's the motive of our heart? Like, why are we, why are we doing what we're doing? Well, if it's the love of God, then you're going to have the energy or the endurance to go through to the end. Thirdly, the scripture says, Galatians 5, 6, that Faith is expressed through love. The nature of love is always to give. Amen. Jesus said, you know, to have two cloaks is not selfish. But to have two cloaks is to have one to give away. There's too many lies and deceptions of the world that says, don't preach a prosperity gospel. Don't talk about everything you can get. And here's all these individuals in the world showing our kids, you know, this is the way to prosper by being in the world. And the enemy is a liar and a counterfeit. And actually, if you think about this, the devil doesn't own anything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof belongs to God. And the, the blessing that God has put on this earth is not for the devil and his crown. And a lot of people believe that it is, but it's really for God and his kids. That's us. And uh, the reason that our faith brings us uh, things which are not important, those things can be a blessing to people which are important. Amen. I said amen. I believe for a laptop computer for four and a half years. <laughs> amen. I'd like to tell you it was four and a half days, but it was four and a half years. Until I got the one I was believing for, you know. Amen. 17 inch screen. I, I, I was specific. I said exactly what I was believing for. 
I said, you know, what kind of battery life I wanted, what kind of software I wanted on that thing. And the Lord, the Lord brought that to pass. Amen. And so, uh, faith is expressed through love. Love gives. Uh, in every language, you know, love is translatable. In every language. In every culture, love is translatable. And then finally, faith only works through love. That's the only way that it works. And so faith, any expression of faith, has to be undergirded through love. So if I speak to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, don't doubt in my heart, believe those things which I say shall come to pass. The motivation for moving that mountain is the love of God. And that's the only way that it's going to work. Amen? Because I know, you know, a lot of individuals say, well, praise God, I'm, you know, going to go preach here and I'm going to go preach there. And I say, well, that's great. I think it's wonderful you're going to preach, but, you know, what's, what's the heart motive? What's the mission? What, 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 what is the assignment? Why is God sending you there? What's the purpose? To reach people. To touch people. To change lives. To change circumstances. To hear some of those testimonies like we've heard today. And probably we could go... You know, many a lot longer hearing all the testimonies of everybody that's in here this morning. Amen? Amen. But thank God that the love of God, say it out loud, the love of God, the love of God has been shed abroad, been shed abroad in, my heart, in my heart by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And I choose, I choose to let that love, let that love dominate, me. dominate me. Not the nature of the flesh, the of the flesh. but I'm a new creation. In Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror through Him who loved me. There's nothing impossible to Him who believes. I am a believer. I'm not a doubter. My faith is in God. My faith is in the Word. My faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, if you'd please stand this morning, we'd like to dismiss service. But uh, before, come, honey, come stand with me. Before we dismiss this morning, into the afternoon now. We don't like to close any service. Uh, there could be somebody under the sound of my voice this morning. We don't take for granted that everybody's a Christian born again. Jesus said you must be born again. And if there's a man, a woman, a boy or a girl that's in the service this morning, I don't believe you're here by accident. I believe the Lord ordered your steps here today. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your heart. But we're going to ask you to respond to the Holy Spirit this morning. And if you raise your hand today and say, Pastor Jim, that's me. I need Jesus. I need Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of my life. I see that hand. Thank you. Is there any other hands that need to receive Christ? I see that hand. Thank you. Is there any other hands that need to receive Christ this morning as Lord and Savior? Now please listen to the instruction. If, if you raised your hand today in response to that call, or you should have raised your hand, I'm going to ask you to take a step of courage, take a step of faith, and meet us down here at this altar today. We want to pray with you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Just come on, step out the aisle. If you raised your hand, or you should have raised your hand, don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Just come on right now. Receive Christ. Come on. Come on this morning. Anybody else that raised your hand or you should have raised your hand? We don't want to miss anybody today. We don't want to miss anybody today. Amen. Amen. Well, we're glad you're in the service with us today. We just want to pray with you if that's okay. All right? All right. We're just going to pray with you. Father God, just repeat this after me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
I confess that I need you as my Lord and Savior. Your word says that if I confess you, you will not cast me out. That you receive me, Lord, because of the blood of Jesus. I renounce Satan and his kingdom. And today, I receive Jesus as the Lord of my life. It's a new day. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you.